opportunity to uh, stand in the gap, uh, stem the tide, so to speak. Uh, there are contrary winds uh, out in our society, and God has given uh, people like me uh, the charge to uh, go against the current when it comes to living right or righteous uh, in the sight of God and in the eyesight of men. Amen. I just like to thank God um, also for uh, our man servant, uh, Brother Wilkie, for entrusting in me to uh, share another portion of God's word. Uh, he's a man that, 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 that likes uh, sharing, uh, uh, not only sharing God's word, uh, but sharing the, the pulpit of uh, a fiberglass, I believe. Uh, amen. I read in the Bible it was a pulpit of wood, uh, but God has blessed us with uh, a see-through uh, pulpit. Uh, and I just pray that we will just uh, just remember to not only praise God, but to also uh, practice the things that we preach. Amen. Yeah. Um, God's word is practical. Yeah. And um, for the last um, few uh, months or so, um, I know we always usually are used to, and we was looking at it this morning, uh, one, of, one of God's great servants, our brother Lawton, um, and, um, and how he uh, brought up another brother. Um, uh, can't think of his name at this time, but, but uh, it's another prominent brother in the brotherhood and, and how he uh, brought up the three points. But uh, there are a lot of points um, in, this, in this short lesson, and I just want to uh, be as clear as I possibly can be. Um, and hopefully um, we will leave here um, with something uh, told uh, to us that we can use in our everyday lives, uh, but not to grow weary and well doing. Amen. Um, I'd like to thank God for my wife and my, and my children, um, because without um, God uh, placing her uh, in my life and in my heart, um, I wouldn't be able to be um, a family man. Amen. We looked at that movie last night too. Oh boy, I love movies. Brother Corey, know I love movies too. Uh, it's called A Family Man. And, uh, and she was just there, his wife was trying to help him to get things in perspective. Uh, and, and, and some of us uh, need to really learn, pay attention to God's word, because when he, when he meant suitable, he really meant suitable. Uh, help me, uh, which is uh, somebody that's supposed to not work on hindering uh, God's will in your life. Uh, amen? Uh, that's what makes her uh, a good choice. Uh, prime rib, amen, so to speak. Uh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I decided to trust and obey her uh, uh, because she uh, told me uh, once you know that you're going to preach, you know, just uh, put a little bit together each day. Amen. And, uh, and we finally got a chance to, uh, to just rest Saturday evening watching another movie called The Family Man. Uh, so I can get up and try to meditate upon God's word um, and giving our uh, family some, some peace. Amen? Amen. Uh, so, so bless her heart and bless my children. Uh, Brother Corey don't know how, and I, he do, he do, I know he do, but I'm just using that uh, to open up. Uh, that sometimes we don't know how prophetic without us being prophets, uh, knowing that, that God works out things providentially um, so that things won't be uh, in our lives looked at as being a coincidence. And he used the key word. You're going to hear it later, but, but he said something about running. Uh, and, that's, and that's part of the message. Uh, he said something about it. Um, and, 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 and Corey and a couple of others uh, know um, as the lesson go on, or even they might even know now, um, that that this has been on my heart for a while um, to share. Uh, I was blessed to share down in inner city. Um, uh, the lesson was uh, uh, there are there, there is a cure. There are cures for any city, county, or country in the chaos that we're in. Uh, that's what I was blessed to preach down in the city. Um, but we're going to talk about the formula of that today. Um, and I just thank God for grace and mercy. Uh, Y'all have no idea. Uh, but, 
But but there are, there are families. Uh, I know y'all heard of the saying that hurt people hurt uh, hurt people. Um, guns don't kill people. Knives don't kill people. Um, but people and their own uh, spiritual demise are hurting uh, folk. And I'm not going to say that everybody is innocent necessarily because we know the Bible talks about that the wicked will be able to, uh, we, we can see their fall or whatever. But, um, but, um, but there are folk, um, like I heard about yesterday, there was a, a baby. I know that baby was innocent. Uh, seven months old. And a, and, a, and, a, and a male took upon himself to, to shake their life out of the baby. Um, and we know the Bible talks about that God is the one that give of life. Uh, we don't have a right, uh, even in our anger, um, to take a life of an individual. And, uh, and hopefully it'll come even clearer to you all um, that uh, what, what has uh, prompted me to, to to teach a lesson like this is because um, not only am I in the inner city, I'm a part of a, a great city that that they 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 say is called Charm City, um, but I know that is that is Harm City. Um, I don't mean no harm, um, uh, and I and I still live there. I'm not running away. Uh, that word again, brother. Corey. I'm not going to run away from the city just because because there's much work to do uh, in 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 Harm City. Amen. Uh, and, and God has a will for us to be able to uh, deal with um, so that we can help other folk uh, while we are in the midst of that turmoil. Um, uh, so, so we're going to deal with this. Um, be patient with me. Uh, I know in the Old Testament, um, the word vision uh, was used over 64 times. And, um, and visions was used 22 times. In the New Testament, it was used 15 times, and then it also was used two times. In the, Old, in the New, New Testament, it was used two times. In the Old Testament, it was used 14 times. So altogether, that's 79 times 24. So it seems to me that vision is very important. Uh, but what we're going to um, see today, uh, hopefully, is that um, that vision is not the way that we may uh, take it to be. Amen? Um, Webster, um, definition for vision, is something seen, a dream or trance, or an object formed by the imagination, a manifestation to the senses, and something immaterial, mode of seeing or conceiving. Unusual discernment or foresight, the act of power of seeing, the special sense by which the qualities of an object as, as a color or luminosity, shape and size constituting its appearance are perceived through the process in which light rays entering the eye are transformed by the retina into electrical signals that are transmitted to the brain by the optic nerve. The optic nerve brings visual stimuli to the brain, like God's word brings sight to our soul for direction without danger. In Psalms 119, 103, and 105, how sweet are the words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precept I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This means we must trust God's word above every concept and precept made by man. One of the things we can count on in God's word, and I believe this is a prerequisite to preaching or a prerequisite to practical practice of God's word. And first Peter it talks about that we ought to know some things first. Knowing this first, that the prophecy of the scriptures of no private interpretation. Amen? The scriptures interpret themselves. But we must understand also, while we out there, and Brother, brother um, uh, Bennett did a fine job this morning. 
And what we got to remember is that we got to be prepared for this practice. And, 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 um, and it talks about in 2 Timothy, the servant of God must uh, not strive, be apt to teach, uh, and be impatient and kind towards all men. Uh, not only must he be apt to teach, but he got to be able to avoid some foolish and unlearned questions. Sometimes we can't avoid certain questions because of pride, or we, or we don't want to avoid certain questions uh, when we should, um, based upon the lack of study or what have you. But, but we must be prepared um, for an unprepared nation. Amen? Basically, we need to see the need for God's word, for everything pertaining to life and godliness, to get the correct perspective or vision. And this means that without God's foresight and insight, we're in trouble. Now this gives sight to the blind. We need to walk by faith and not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. The beginning lyrics of the King of Rock album, song entitled, You're Blind, talks about tall buildings and skyscrapers and apartment buildings and apartment flats that had met minimum safety standards. And the people in them had troubled hearts and weakened minds by chasing false hope of prosperity and not reality. Run, also known as Joseph Simmons, said, you just go through life without a trace when the answers you seek are in front of your face. Listen, everybody, we have the answers for reality, sight in front of our face. The Bible has the answers, amen? Proverbs 16 and one, it says the preparations uh, of man is clean in his own eyes. And it talks about that, that, that the answer is from the tongue of the Lord. If we want to know the answers to how we are to live this life, check in the book, the book of books that's in front of your face. God speaks to us through his prophets and our learning through his prophet, the priest, the preacher, and King Jesus. In Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, God at sundress times and diverse manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, but in these last days has spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things and whom he have made the worlds. As Run and DMC continue in the third stanza, Run says, So you think the facts mean you can't win. So you devote your time to a life of sin. Let's, let's pause there for station identification. Now this individual wasn't even a member of the church. His father was a preacher, but he wasn't a member of the church. But see, sometimes we try to avoid addressing something as it is with falsified labels you know, like a mistake or error, but it's sin. Sin is the problem. And if this man can mention the word S-I-N in an album, in a record, then why can't we? Amen? He says, trying to survive, making deals, talking jive, and telling lies about being fly or even sly. Lastly, the group concludes the rap with perpetrating a fraud, wearing fake gold to impress people, and your attire was wearing the tightest jeans and the shortest skirt. And you think you're cold chilling looking like a jerk. No matter what you do, come out second rate. Thinking you were on time, but you're already late. You're blind, you're blind, you're blind. See, the church knows that God has given us through his word and Timothy that we ought to dress a certain way. Amen. Not only the women, and talk about the women, but, but men ought to dress a certain way too, amen? And like man, and he talked about that they ought to dress of modest apparel and, and not to be sham-faced and not to be of, of things that are flamboyant. See, God's people have to stand out, amen? And look the part of what we're being taught. And then he says, and you can't see. You need to wear some glasses like DMC. DMC continues with stanza four. You're headed to the top, or so you think, but that's not true for you. Your life is on a brink of self-destruction. 
total corruption. Then he goes on talking about working real hard for nothing and having your check ate up by inflation. So you try to make a hustle to get ahead, but only thing you manage is to stay in the red copping from John to sell to Rex. And your Jones for success has put your life in check. You know, there are folk that, that live from paycheck to paycheck. There are folk that rob Peter to pay Paul, so to speak. This is what he's talking about, but he's also talking about it from the street level of robbing other folk, and in return, you're robbing the person that you just gave something to. He says, you're chasing success, which is fake. I remember reminding our oldest son that success in this life and the life to come, it begins with trusting God's word meditation of the word and doing what the word says. Amen. And Joshua 1 8, this book of the law shall not depart, depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt have good success. With the hook, you're blind. And you can't see. You need to wear glasses like DMC. This metaphor about living life with no vision is through the eyes of Joseph Simmons. And running DMC, also known as Daryl McDaniels, or known as the devastating Mike Controller. In order for us to see clearly on how to navigate through this life appropriately, we cannot rely on our 2020 or 2015, or 2010, or even 25 diagnosed vision, because these types of vision can help us to make sound spiritual decisions to please God. But when it comes to God's expectations, we need to uh, trust always and consult God first, because there were some researchers that have discovered that our physical sight can be okay, great, or even challenging. For instance, 2020 vision is a term used to express normal vision and its security. The clarity or sharpness of vision measured at 20 feet distance. If you have 20 hundred vision, it means that you must be as close as 20 feet to see what a person with normal vision can see at 100 feet. The highest visual acuity ever measured was in an unnamed Aboriginal man, native of Australia, who had better visual acuity than the average European. His vision measured at 6, 1.5, meaning that he could read the chart at six meters away, as well as someone with normal vision could read it from 1.5 meters away which means that the same 4.9 feet would be the normal vision for somebody to see at 19.6 feet. That means this man got superior vision. Amen? With the best eyesight ever recorded for humans who physically had this type of vision would not cause us to articulate the meaning behind God's messages because it takes spiritual discernment which is vision of truth for truth. This vision is when one adheres to God's written revelation, not revelations, but God's written revelation of his will for morality. Run DMC's perspective for dealing with life itself was introspection of his or her life. But if we run, Brother Cord, to DMC and not the rapper, but the DMC of heaven, which is the deliverer, the Messiah, and the Christ. We will get the answers on how to approach life's hurdles more appropriately through his vision. For example, in Luke 6, 41 through 42, your brother, your sister, or neighbor has sin in their lives. And when we address their sin, we must allow God to give us the correct approach with his vision not our view. Metaphorically speaking, 
a moat or a dry twig in your brother's eye describes his sin, but with timber in your eye, our view of our sin is going to be very difficult to see our sin because we've been blinded by the moat in our eye. Amen? So that makes it difficult of our approach. It says sin cannot be approached correctly because then we attempt to condemn someone of their sin without addressing our sin problem. As a result, compassion and transparency is withheld from the process of helping others with their sin. Now, when it comes to the family dynamics, we need to approach this matter with care because most of the families we come from have had our own traditions when it came to disciplinary actions without discipline. Let that sit in for a moment. Our disciplinary actions without discipline. Because even though disciplinary action is necessary, we must get God's word to be able to discipline us or get us in subjection on how to discipline someone. Amen? One of the familiar sayings was, do as I say and not as I do. Sometimes we receive beatings or weapons without teaching us about the wrong beforehand. That brought resentment and anger that was not addressed. The love of Christ must be presented, even more so when physical discipline is, is applied. The child is not provoked to wrath. Amen? I remember having to discipline one of our children. I'm not going to say male or female. Um, amen. Uh, some things need to stay in the house to help the house. Amen. Uh, and, 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 and the child did something that was that was way out there. And, and it was brought to my attention because uh, the school uh, assistant uh, brought it to our attention. Now, I knew that I was going to have to extend um, the Board of Education. Um, so, I, so I prayed about it while I was at work. I prayed about it on my way from work. And I prayed about it as I, as I got to the door um, of our home. But when I got home, the individual was, was, was somewhere where they normally wouldn't be when they come in our room. So I know that they was looking for compassion um, because they normally be on mom's side of the bed when they're in the room. But this particular day, not coincidental, my brother, this is providential. They was on my side of the bed to remind me that I need to be compassionate. Amen? But I extended the invitation uh, of, the, of the belt anyhow. Um, but before the belt took its place, uh, I reminded the individual of what they was taught. Amen? Before I extended the belt to the place. But that same child today will give me a hug before they go to bed. They will remind me how much that they love me because of me uh, loving Christ Jesus. Amen? And his disciplinary teaching. In Christ, our children need to see godly examples in the home to accept true discipline. They need to be able to follow us as we follow Christ. In 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, be as ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. Before we get to our text, the word vision needs to be, be defined by Vine's dictionary. We already got Webster out the way. Vision comes from the Greek word horoma or horosis or optasia. Horoma, that which is seen, a spectacle, Matthew 17 and 9, or Acts 19 and 11. I know you know about uh, where, where uh, uh, Ananias had seen a vision um, about uh, going to one named Saul, um, that he was going to become a chosen vessel unto Christ. Amen? And, and, and see, that definition is an appearance. 
a vision. Um, but when we get to our text, that's not what we're going to be talking about. An appearance. Harassus means the sense or sight is rendered. Visions, Acts 2.17, Revelations 9.17, Optasia, lately formed from the Greek language, which means Optasius, the act of seeing, Optanio, to see, a coming into view, a vision, Luke 21 and 22, 24 23, Acts 26, 19, and 2 Corinthians 12, 1. Strong's defines vision from the Hebrew word kaon, meaning a sight or a dream, revelation or oracle. The word vision in our text means to see or come into view, which comes to us in order to give us the deeper meaning. It also means in Hebrew a sight, a dream, revelation, or oracle. Remember in Daniel, when Daniel had received a vision because Nebuchadnezzar didn't understand the dream that he was getting, and he knew that the Babylonian, the, the Medio Persians, the Greece, and the, and the Roman Empire uh, was the, the, the empires that were going to be crushed uh, so God can build his kingdom. Amen? So, so, so that was uh, an interpretation. Amen? Uh, but that's still not what we're going to be talking about. Amen? The Proverbs, in Proverbs 29 and 18, where the title has derived from the clause, No Vision, the title of this lesson is No Need for 2020's Vision Without God's View. No Need for 2020's Vision Without God's View. Uh, I appreciate uh, God uh, given uh, Brother Wilkie uh, his vision. Uh, amen. Uh, because uh, what's going to be uh, a part of 2020 vision. Did y'all catch the 22? Catch, catch 22? 2020's vision? Hey, amen. Uh, uh, is that we ought to know how to live a resurrected life. Amen. Amen. Um, that's what the theme for 2020 is going to be, living a resurrected life. See, that's not from Brother Wilkie's eyesight. That's from God's sight. Amen? And see, since children, since children, since children come from God, shouldn't we take heed to his vision of love? Let's turn to Psalms 127, 1 through 5. I need a strong reader, strong reader. Amen? Psalms 127. It doesn't matter if it's a sister or not. Just, I need you to read it like you, like you love God's word. Amen? Psalms 120, one through 27, 1 through 5. Except the Lord builds the house, mm -hmm. they labor in vain. Mm -hmm. that All right. All right. It is in vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb. Huh. Back to me being a movie lover. My wife and I was blessed to, 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 to receive some influence of another movie called Like Arrows, Sister Bennett. That also prompted me to do this lesson because in the movie, they had family struggles like we do from time to time. 
and, 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 and what they struggled with was God's vision. And, and we ought not struggle with it. Because God's vision is always right. Amen. And he will make it clear to us one way or the other. Even if we choose to be blind. He will make it clear. See, an heritage is an inheritance. A possession. Not for us to be possessive. But it is our stewardship. God has given us stewardship. Over the children that he didn't bless us with. And if we want them to live right. Then we got to be right in their sight. And in our sight of God for them to live right. So we can be fellow stewards. Amen. Of one another. Because they have a job to do as well. We're going to see later on in text. Because, because children are in heritage from the Lord. But they not only there for the Lord only. Amen. Now at the beginning of our text. We're going to find out that Solomon, the king of Israel, who was the son of David, who was chosen to build the temple, was known as the ultimate peacemaking king in Israel in history. We got to realize that that's one of the beatitudes. Blessed are the peacemakers. See, we want to we want to we want to uh, do things that will uh, help keep the peace. Uh, even though we didn't create peace, the one that with vision, with the vision, is the one that created peace. God created peace. And then he says, blessed are those that are peacemakers. Those that do what the maker said are the peacemakers. Even though we didn't make the peace. Amen? See, it proves that, that, that Solomon was, was the man of wisdom. Because when you look in 1 Kings 3 and 7 and 1 Kings 4 and 29 and, and in Proverbs 10 and 1, Solomon was a man of wisdom. But listen very carefully. In Ecclesiastes 1, I think around verse 18, it says, with much wisdom bring many sorrows. We got to remember with the knowledge that God gives us, there's going to be some grief involved. There's going to be some long suffering. That's what love does. It, it suffers long. Amen. It's patient. It's kind. It says that Solomon was admonishing parents to be obedient and wise of God's counsel for disciplinary actions when needed for correcting bad behavior. See, this is something that need not to be abused. We know that there are abusive parents. Shake the child to death, throw them down the steps, and, and so on and so on. You know, uh, punch their lights out. We, we know that exists. But I'm here to tell you, like when I was blessed, my wife and I and, and, and the Lorks to go to the town hall meeting. And I, and I proposed a question to our future leadership, so to speak. And, and the question was, was how you as future candidates will help parents that don't fear God enough, but fear the laws of the land in reference to disciplinary in their children. How are you going to deal with that law to help society to be better in Baltimore City, in any city for that matter? Because there are more people that are fearful of being locked up by the law than disciplinary actions to take place for their own children that God gave them stewardship over. See, we ought not fear man. Amen? We ought to fear God that can kill the body and the soul in the Hadean realm. Amen? That's who we ought to fear and respect and bring total reverence to. But when we taught God's word and understand God's word, we're not going to hold back these actions. We would rather be incarcerated than burn your child way early. Amen? See, one thing that we could count on from this book of wisdom in Proverbs 29 and 13, that the poor and the deceitful meet together. But God bringeth light to them both. See, no matter what, we have an opportunity to seek after God's righteousness for this matter. A rod comes from the Hebrew word Shabbat. 
a literal stick or branch for punishing, reproof, chastisement, rebuke, and for argument's sake. See, sometimes arguments need to happen because something needs to be addressed. But those arguments must be done without fighting below the belt. Amen. Anybody know what that means, fighting below the belt? You know, because in any professional fight of boxing, fighting below the belt disqualifies that boxer because that's not where he's supposed to be or she's supposed to be laying blows. But see, when it comes to the family life, we got to realize that we ought not fight below the belt because that disqualifies us as far as God is concerned with being a faithful steward over our stewardship. Amen? In Proverbs 22 and 15, wisdom for the child is obtained with verbal and physical restraint. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. A child should never be left alone to decide his or her discipline or left home alone without discipline. Has anyone seen the movie Home Alone or the sequel? Good movie, but it was ridiculous. Let's move on. In Luke 29, Proverbs 29 rather, in verse 16, it says, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. When sin is not addressed, the behavior gets worse. And you and I as parents will see its results. We need to promptly trust what God has to say. This is his vision, not ours. In Proverbs 21 and 12, the righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wicked and his wickedness. Furthermore, Solomon goes on to say in Proverbs 29 and 17, if you want peace deep down in your soul or conscience, please discipline your children. Amen? That's your, that's your stewardship. In addition to discipline, physically, we must have God's oracles his words, and his view in mind. The only way we can think like God is when we hear his vision, his revelation. In verse 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. This is our focus text. We can see that if we try to discipline our children without Christian chastisement, it will cause chaos. Parish in the Hebrew means cast off. It means to dismiss or to refuse or to expose. What this literally means is that if we don't discipline our children, our children are going to make a spectacle of who we are in Christ Jesus or without Christ in our life. It's going to be exposed. They also are going to show on how they dismiss, amen, or throw away God's will in their lives because they're strong-willed, and we have decided not to take God at his word. When we read verse 18, you got that, Clint? In the New Living Translation, you got that, my brother? He should be pulling it up. Verse 18. Well, yeah, New Living Translation. He's supposed to pull it up on the board. Let me know when you're ready. While he's getting that, when people don't accept God's divine guidance, they will run wild. But whosoever obeys the law, they will live a joyful life. You got that? Because when you read this in the New Living Translation, it, it, will, it will bring it even more clearer. 
we cannot deny God's vision. Where there is no vision, mm -hmm. the people perish. But he that keepeth the law is happy to see it. Mm -hmm. The servant is not to be directed by words. For through, for, for though he understand, he will not end. Mm -hmm. And see, this, this type of restraint is, is a level of control, but not controlling. Amen? That means God's word has been expressed from their youth up. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 and 6, says, train up a child, and when he is old, he shall not depart from it. See, he may cast off for a few. He may refuse for a few. He may even expose his life to the public for a few but that word amen but that word will give him it will eat on his conscience and see this this type of restraint this type of cast off this type of no vision i mean perish the word perish means that it's a control over the expression of one's emotions or thoughts that restricts movement and we got to understand that that parish in the text means that they're not that they're going to be done away with right away because God has grace and mercy in this plan. It's not talking about ultimately done away with. It's talking about some things happening while these things are in place through discipline. Amen. That you had did previously in his years and his youth up. So we got to realize that this is not a controlling parent, but an obedient parent. Amen? We, can't, we cannot uh, curve behavior of our children if we can't understand their wrong, which sometimes they will still rebel without the rod. That's what he meant by not only with words. In verse uh, uh, 19, it says, The servant will not be corrected by words. It's talking about words only won't do. Amen? Sometimes we got to use the paddle. Amen? We have to discipline them physically, but remember, we have to instill in them God's word before disciplining them. Amen? So they won't be resentment and want to grow up and then do damage to the parent or the parents. Also, in verse 20, Saying sometimes to quickly open our mouths may cause more confusion. It can become hopeless. In other words, in verse 20, we need to realize parenting is a skill. And it can be mastered with the master's help. In James 1, 19, wherefore, my beloved brethren, he's not talking to just the brothers. He's talking to the Delphotis, which is the male and female of the same womb, the womb of Christ. He says, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, and woman, slow to speak, slow to wrath, slow to anger. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. See, our children don't need to see us go off when we haven't taught them anything in the first place. I remember reading in Deuteronomy 6, uh, where it talks about uh, as, you, as you walk and as you talk, you have these things on the wall. You teach them God's statutes and, and things of that nature. And, and I remember my wife used to have it posted on the doorposts and, and, and all over the, the house, uh, certain verses uh, throughout the month. And see, that's a help me uh, when dealing with your children. But sometimes, sometimes, she'll bring it to me and say, I need you to handle it. And see, what we need to remember 
And then in Proverbs 10 and 1, and Solomon was talking about that a wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son brings heaviness to the mother. The father has to realize that the mom can't take but so much. Amen? Even though the father is a weak vessel as well, but he has to realize that the framework of the woman is not as suitable for all of the discipline. Amen? She should not bear all of that. Amen? It's the job of both parents, in my conclusion. Proverbs 29 and 21, the child who has been pampered, that's what it means by delicately bringing up his servant. See, some of us don't realize or hasn't realized that God brought these children in our lives not only for them to serve him ultimately, but to serve us while they're here as well. Amen? I have no problem with telling my children, it's time for you to do the dishes. It's time for you to, uh, 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 to, to, to take out the trash. I have no problem. Because that's all I do is work. Amen? Amen. Some folk think I work in my sleep. I don't work in my sleep. What I try to do is do what God says while sleeping. I try to meditate upon God's word. But what happens is if we don't work out our own salvation with fear and trembling just before even laying down to sleep, we can't think on those things that are above while in our sleep. There'd be so many things that will come across our mind, even in our subconscious. Amen? The child has been pampered throughout his or her upbringing will bring you and I grief at the end. They would have become a rebel to you and God. In Ephesians 6.1, the Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right, that your days may be prolonged upon the earth. We got to understand, as well as our children, if we want longevity on this earth, we need to obey God's vision. Those who are in the Lord and are struggling with this very fact, you have a chance to repent and ask for prayers. See, time and chance happen to them all. God made sure that through the wise men, uh, 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 Solomon as well, that we got to realize that chance happens only on this side of life. We don't get no more chances to get life right in the next life. We got to get that right in this life. Amen? And those who are not in the Lord, I know you are sure enough struggling without help from the Holy Spirit. And God's uh, spirit also is the deal sealer and our down payment on being redeemed. The Holy Spirit is the one that assists us if we allow him to guide us into God's righteousness. This is not Monty Hall, let's make a deal. God has said that he only gives his Holy Spirit to them that obey him. In order for us to be in a better position when it comes to being a better steward over our stewardship, our children, our uh, God children, or even as a grandparent, or even as somebody that's seeking parenthood, we want to make sure that we trust God's vision in the up and coming year of 2020 and beyond. Only if God grant us so. Amen? Amen? And I'm hoping that this lesson was, 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 was done in a way or received in a way that was, that, that was loving uh, because, because it was on my heart because these uh, murders, we may say that they're unnecessary, but the reason why a lot of these things are happening because we don't see how necessary it is to discipline or we don't see how necessary it is to be disciplined. Amen? We got to trust God's will and his way. And for those that, 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 that understand that they need God's help and have not become a member of God's family, which is the Church of Christ, which you can read about in your Bible, you just heard God's word. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And see, we also must make 
our belief known in our sight of men. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. And he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. We also must make his confession. Not their confession, but his confession. Because there are folk that are saying you got to confess your sins in a booth. In order to be right with Christ. But that's not getting right with Christ. Getting right with Christ, you got to confess your faith in Christ. And when you're already in Christ, you got to confess your sins one to another. Not to just one. Amen? That don't mean you have to come up here and tell everybody your sinful problems. That just means that I need help. Can you pray for me? I have sin in my life. Amen? Because some things need to be kept confidential so that it won't become a gossip column. Amen? That's how you protect those that are trying to remain innocent. Amen? We got to remember that we also got to uh, uh, repent. We got to change the way we think. We got to change the way we see things because this is God's vision. God's vision for this family is that all families matter. All families matter. That means all souls matter to him. Amen? So we got to always remain faithful in Christ Jesus. He says that his stewards got to remain faithful with the mysteries of Christ Jesus. And then we also got to remember that these folk that have not obeyed the gospel got to be baptized. You got to be baptized in the watery graves of baptism. And that's how you begin your journey on living a resurrected life. Amen? That's the theme for the congregation here at Edgewood. Living a resurrected life for this coming year, 2020. And we need to be praying hard that we can help others that are members of this body and beyond to live a resurrected life. And those that have not obeyed the gospel, remember that this is your time. This is the acceptable time to obey the gospel so that you can help you and your children to see God's precious promises. Remember in Acts 2, he says, this promise is unto you and your children and them that are far off. Amen? Let us stand. The lesson is yours. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you 